Welcome to the Comedy Cube, y'all. Give it up, y'all. This beautiful lady I'm bringing up here, she's funny and she's beautiful. Please give it up for Nikki Ma! She didn't stand up. I saw you. <laughs> you didn't stand up. It's fine. I know, and you're really pretty, so you sit. Okay. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you guys are young, aren't you? How old are you? Oh, 23. Okay. Um, it's 20. Yeah, you stay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just jealous. I, I don't know how to talk to people that young anymore. I'm like, what do you... What do you want for Christmas? <laughs> it's intimidating. Oh, God. I'm just jealous because I'm, I'm in my mid-30s, which is, yeah. Oh. <laughs> the worst part about being in my 30s is when people ask me my age and then I tell them, they go, oh, yeah, me too. Because all I can think of is, God, do I look like that? <laughs> the one thing I, <laughs> I don't get, and it makes me feel really old, is these teenagers with the face tattoos. <laughs> I can't relate. I, I don't get it. I sound like my grandma when they walk by. I'm like, when I was your age, I just used to cut myself. I don't know why everyone rags on my generation being like, oh, you millennials, you want everything so fast and easy. You're never gonna hold down a job. You're never gonna be in a long-term relationship. You're never gonna own a home. But I am gonna own a home. I'm just waiting for my parents to die. <laughs> my dad has too, so I'm set. <laughs> he wasn't around when I was growing up, so he can die. He can die. With COVID, it was looking good, but he survived. <laughs> Do I have any other bastards in the audience? Yeah, okay, I, I knew it because you said, damn. Yeah, yeah, you're like, yeah, he, damn, he should die. You're like, damn, he did get out alive. It's very confusing growing up without a dad, right? Especially in the schoolyard when kids say, my dad's better than your dad. And I was like, wait, you've seen him? Where is he? <laughs> I also thought weird things because he wasn't in my life. <laughs> I always thought that I didn't know much about penises. I just figured you guys walked in on your dad's changing, you saw a dinky, that was that. I didn't know. Until recently, I said to my friend, no, Renee, you are more sexually advanced than I was because you had a brother and a dad, so you knew what to expect. She was like, nope, I never saw their dicks. <laughs> this whole time, I just always figured, I don't know how to give a blow job. My dad wasn't around. <laughs> he came back, though, so I'm pretty good. Pretty good. He left because he's a drummer, rock and roll guy, which made me a mistake. And uh, now that he's retired, he's trying to be a part of my life. So it's payback. And I said, sure, you can be a part of it if you do a podcast with me where I teach you how to be a father. <laughs> revenge, revenge, he's doing it. Yeah, he's, it's like we're hashing out our issues. I'm saying, don't do that. It's called Woe Dad, based on the moment that I realized he had no clue how to be a father. He came to one of my shows, and now remember, he's a rock and roll guy, did a lot of drugs, like really out of it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and he comes to my show, and he goes, ah, Nikki. I don't know why you doubt yourself. You're funny, you got what it takes, and you look sexy on stage. 
Yeah, I was said, whoa, dad, you can't call your children sexy. He's like, well, no, I don't mean it like that. It's just like what we see on the road. I, oh, I guess people would think I'm like creepy like Woody Allen if they heard me say that. I was like, no, no, they don't think that. They know you didn't touch me. How could you? You weren't there. <laughs> People think I have daddy issues because my boyfriend's a drummer too. It's really annoying. But they, no, they're nothing alike though. My boyfriend never calls me sexy. <laughs> I've been with my boyfriend nine years. I don't know if you heard what I said. Boyfriend. Well, I didn't say it was good, but thank you. <laughs> He's my boyfriend nine years. That's a long time to be my boyfriend. Right, ladies? Like, come on. I'm obviously ready to take our relationship to the next level. Like, I'm waiting, fantasizing about it. How's it going to happen? I'm ready. I'm ready to cheat on him. <laughs> I feel like he's given up on me, though, because every time we're hooking up, he'll be like, your Greek is showing which means that he can see my pubes before he's taking my shorts off. <laughs> okay, all right, judgy, judgy, judgy. This is what you gotta do in relationships. You gotta test them so they can look past things, you know? He had a man bun, he cut it off, he's not hot anymore. I look past it. <laughs> I look past his jackrabbiting. You guys know what that is? I feel like you're too young, you're probably actually getting jackrabbited for sure. Jackrabbiting, for those of you who don't know, is that moment when you're like about to have sex and then you're like, okay, fine, give it to me. Give me that mediocre dick. And then they stick it in you and go like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know, you know, yeah, yeah. And I confronted him too. I said, hey, Matt Myers, Google him, shame him. Uh, when you do that, it doesn't feel good. He goes, oh yeah, well I have to do it that way or else I'm gonna lose my boner. <laughs> what is that? I feel like guys always use their boners as excuses. You're like, I can't wear a condom, I'm gonna lose my boner. <laughs> oh, I have to stick it in your ass first, I'm gonna lose my boner. Oh, I can't marry you, I'm gonna lose my boner. <laughs> I like when it rains in LA cause I can just stand in it and remember what it's like to get wet. <laughs> Don't moan for him, moan for me, I'm the one in the pain. Oh God. My old restaurant job called me up this week and said, do you want to come back to work? And I was like, no way, Jose. I'm trying to say no way, Jose, as much as possible before it becomes racist, so. <laughs> I just, I don't want to go back to waitressing because I can't deal with a table of girls that like come in, they see each other and they're like, you're acting surprised you made a reservation. <laughs> what are these turds like when they get in their car, turn it on, it moves, and they're like, ah! <sighs> Die. <laughs> I like it when people are miserable. Like, people's misery is my happiness. <laughs> My favorite table I ever had was this old couple. They'd been together like 40 years. She's yelling at him, don't touch the silverware. And he's like, I'm just trying to eat. And I said, I'll take them. And I go over, where were you? We're ready to order. <laughs> she looks at him and goes, okay, what do you want? The cauliflower? He says, no, what about broccoli? I don't want broccoli. What about french fries? I have potatoes for lunch. Well, I can't read your mind. I don't know what we should get. What do you think we should get? I said a divorce. 
They were great, though. I really liked them. You have to put up with so much shit when you're waitressing. It's just like smile and nod, smile and nod to a point where you just kind of like can't do it anymore. Especially when I get like the L.A. douchebags, you know, like the agents. I mean, if there is an agent here, this is just for the joke, okay? <laughs> I had these two guys and they said, Yo, babe, what's your favorite dessert? I said, the pound cake. <laughs> they go, you don't eat the pound cake. I said, yeah, I eat the pound cake. And they go, nah, you don't eat the pound cake. And then I thought, huh, did I eat the pound cake? <laughs> you don't eat the pound cake. How are you so skinny? So I looked them in the eye and I said, because I throw up after. It's rude, don't, don't, you know, don't talk about a woman's body, but also it wasn't as bad as when customers would tell me that I look like John Cusack. <laughs> okay, okay, you know what, all right. Some of you are too young to know who that is. Uh, it's a man, <laughs> that's, I had three tables tell me that, and then this pretentious woman tried to comfort me, and she goes, you don't look like John Cusack from High Fidelity, you look like a younger John Cusack from Say Anything. I was like, Mom, that's still a man. Like, you're still telling me I look like a man. And it's so annoying coming from my mom because she's hot. I have a hot mom. She's like the kind of hot where my dad for sure kept his eyes open when they had sex. That's like a 10 plus. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm an ugly now, but like I was a very ugly kid, so I have a lot of issues with her and insecurities. Like I was so ugly that when I was with her, people thought I was adopted. So it's like, great, not only is she hot, she's also a humanitarian. Like people didn't know if I was a boy or a girl, which is cool now, but it wasn't back then. I had a mustache, a unibrow. For Halloween, she would take advantage of it and she'd dress me up as Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> Some of you are too young to know that. It's still a man, so. <laughs> and now, because of growing up with that, her getting all the attention, I just always compare myself to other people. I'm always, you know, wanting people to like me and everybody's better than me. To the point that when I was in third grade, I used to bring my friends Ziploc bags of change just so they would be nice to me. Too, too sad? <laughs> but I'm telling you this because when I moved here, everybody said, oh, be careful in LA, getting into the entertainment industry, it's really hard. I was like, I'm made for rejection. Like, I am made for this town. I've been treating life like a casting call since I was four. Held at gunpoint in a bank robbery. It's a true story. I was in a bank and I was sitting at the chair by the door. My babysitter was at the teller. And these two robbers walked in. They said, freeze, everybody lie down on your stomach. So I curled up in a ball and instead of being afraid of the gun that was in my face, all I could think about was, Am I doing it right? <laughs> they said on my stomach, but this isn't really my stomach. It's more like my boobs on my legs. But I guess not really even my boobs because I don't have any right now. I should probably get implants. <laughs> Is this too over the top? Why does he have a gun against her head? Is she skinnier than me? <laughs> Am I even in the camera right now? Can they even see me in the security camera? That's the motivation I needed. So I got up and I ran across the room. I would lay down next to my babysitter. The cop came, my hot mom came, and the cop said to me and my mom, you know, you're really lucky your daughter didn't get shot because if they hadn't seen her, they could have just reacted, you know? I will never forget how traumatizing that was. Like, my stomach dropped, and to just hear that and think, what, they didn't even notice me? And then the cop got my mom's number. <laughs> All right, guys. 
I'm gonna get real for a minute. Anybody have weird dreams during COVID? Yeah? You wanna share it? No, you don't wanna share it? Okay. I feel like it was a weird, anxious time, right? Like, I had weird dreams, you know? You have a dream you killed someone? I, I, I had a dream my grandma ate me out. I know. I know. I know! Sir, I know! Do you know how fucked up it is to wake up and be like, oh, cool, I just dreamt that my dead grandma went down on me, and I kind of liked it. It was nice to see her, though. <laughs> oh, you guys didn't like that. I did. She didn't have teeth, so <laughs> it's a win. Okay, so here's what's up. My anniversary is coming up with my boyfriend, and I wrote him a song, and I want to test it out on you guys, okay? Okay, this goes out to Matt, who... Uh, couldn't be here right now. Isn't that too bad? Okay. I love you for what you do for me. You bring me wine and I make you food. You ate too much in and out in a minute you'll poo. You ruined the night. You drank too much booze. Your dick is too soft and it's too limp to use. Fuck you for what you do for me. You fell asleep going down on me, but I humped your nose and I came instantly. It's based on a true story. When you start to snore, I aim your breath at my breast With the right angle, it feels like a caress I'm only fucking you when you're asleep I get on top, I wind and grind to wake you up I tickle your balls, I refuse to give up It's been so long since my clit has felt Anything touch it, so I'll try hump your belt This has been a Funny Media Group production.